Good day, everybody. My name is Brett Ender, and I work as an academic at Monash University. What you're watching is a video that I'm the first of a series of videos that I'm recording uh, for a subject that I teach here at Monash called Business and Economic Statistics. So some of you will be, or most of you will be my students, diligently watching your videos in preparation for the, the material that you'll be learning in lectures and uh, computer labs in subsequent weeks. But if you happen to accidentally come across this, you may well just be watching it for the entertainment value. Hope you find it interesting. This first uh, video will be a very simple introductory one where I'm going to just chat with you a little bit about the importance of data and how it helps us to uh, uh, make intelligent decisions if we use it right and if we get the right kind of data. So let's uh, have a little bit of a chat here. You can see that I'm sitting in my office with not much happening, but what I'm going to do is uh, click you across to full screen so that you can see the PowerPoint presentation that we're going to be working off today. So the subject that my students are enrolled in is ETC 1000, Business and Economic Statistics, and the topic of this short presentation, as I said, is about uh, data, information and decisions. So what is statistics all about? That's the title of the subject. It's all about taking data and using that data to provide information. So those are two key words. We're going to think a little bit about data and where it comes from in uh, subsequent times. But uh, what, one of the things that we are going to emphasize is that having data alone is not You need to organize that data in an intelligent way, find patterns in data, look for information in that data that can actually inform decisions. And so we have the sequence of taking some data, using it to provide information, and then in turn using that information to inform decisions. And this might seem fairly obvious, but many times the way organizations work, the way governments make decisions, or the way businesses uh, make strategic plans for the future, many times those decisions are based on just intuition or what we've done before, accepted wisdom. And that has kind of got you through in the past, but uh, many times it's also meant that things have come unstuck, particularly in a changing world where uh, things that worked in the past may not work in the future because of the, the circumstances that our organization is working within. So what we need in order to uh, plan well and to run organizations well is hard evidence, and that's where data comes in. There's a little phrase here that you might hear occasionally, you cannot manage what you cannot measure. So if you imagine being part of an organization, you're trying to make sure that the the people that are working for you are performing well, doing their job well, uh, delivering what they're supposed to be delivering. Well, you can kind of just have occasional uh, information gathering that sort of randomly gives you a bit of context about what's going on, but far better if you can measure carefully what's happening and then be sure that you're actually getting what you expect. Another piece of jargon, there's going to be a quite a bit of jargon in this uh, little presentation that people come across often is this idea of business intelligence. This is the, the trendy way to uh, describe what businesses do when they collect data and organizing to provide information. And so business intelligence is an umbrella phrase for a number of different types of data collection and processing. So first one we've got here is descriptive analytics and then we have diagnostic analytics. Both of those look at data that's been collected about the past and try to understand what's happened, to describe what's happened, as you can see there, and perhaps to diagnose, to identify kind of uh, patterns in the past. When we look to the future, which is of course where most of our work needs to be, we're starting to look then at predictive analytics and prescriptive analytics. What is likely to happen to predict the future? And then what should happen is the prescriptive, to, to identify whether we can influence the outcomes of the future. Another phrase that you can see here is this idea of big data, and we'll think about that a little bit more. So here is just a bit more description on, on those different terms. Descriptive analytics, describing a set of data. What are the characteristics of it? And that might sound like a fairly trivial task, but it's often quite profound when people who uh, come across some data and actually see the way what the data actually tells us often get many surprises as to what's actually going on. We think we know our customer data. We think all our customers are, are young and groovy and then we get the data on them and we realize that actually the, the age demographic, demographic of our customers is very different, for example. 
So that's simple sounding, but actually often very profound for how an organisation can work. Diagnostic and analytics starts to get a little more exciting because now we're looking for patterns in the data, correlations between different factors, so that we might be able to identify you know, what's driving what here in the way in which things work. And many times, again, you'll get surprise correlations, things that you wouldn't expect to kind of relate to each other. Perhaps you see something about the, the, the location of where your customers come from. I don't know if you've noticed sometimes when you go shopping and people ask you what postcode are you from. They're collecting data on you to identify where their sphere of influence is in terms of postcodes so they can work out perhaps where to target their advertising or where their weak spots are in terms of their, their market penetration and so on. Predictive analytics, uh, which is also sometimes called business analytics, is about building models and this will be what you might learn about if you watch some more of these videos later on, allowing us to predict outcomes. So we start to formalise those correlations or patterns in the data that we saw in diagnostic analytics into models that we can use to predict. And prescriptive analytics takes the models that little step further in that it actually comes up with models that allow us to design actions, interventions that can influence outcomes. So we start to think about ways in which we can change government policy, change our marketing strategy, whatever it might be, so that we can actually influence the outcomes that we care about, people's uh, health or people's uh, uh, sales of our company or whatever it is that we care about. You recall a couple of minutes ago I mentioned this term big data and it's come up a lot in the popular press so I thought it might be worthwhile just uh, pausing for a moment on how it all fits with what we're talking about here and perhaps get a bit of definition to it. When people refer to big data, what they're talking about is a collection of large and complex data sets. Nothing more profound than that, simply lots of data. What characterises big data usually is that it's large and complex but also that it brings data together from different sources. So there's uh, an integration task that needs to be done. You've got some data perhaps from your customer database, you've got some data from your sales records and somehow you need to integrate those two. You might then have some data from the government census uh, which kind of you want to relate all together. It's difficult to process big data using the sort of standard tools that we learn about way back in you know, high school um, basic mathematics and basic statistics because those tools are really designed for small data sets. When you come to look at big data, you need to do more than just look at statistics, but it starts with computing. It starts with IT, where you've got to a major task of managing and organising these large data sets. And because they're so big, you often spend a lot more time on visualisation, on looking at the data in visual ways to identify patterns. And then, perhaps not totally sequentially, you might use statistics to discover patterns and to develop models. So statistics has a very important role in big data, but alone it cannot do it. You need to be quite good at IT as well in order to make progress with analysing big data. You'll see some examples of big data around the place. Here's one example of some big data extraction and analysis. One of the sources of big data, of course, is the internet and the kind of activities that people undertake on the internet. Because when you now search for something, you do it electronically through uh, a web search of engine of some variety like Google, then your behaviour can actually be observed and recorded. And then your behaviour can be aggregated across a whole bunch of other people's behaviour and we can start to see patterns. And here's one pattern just to give you an idea of how the world of data is changing. These are four different search terms that we've collected data on from Google and we've asked the question over the period of a few years, starting in 2000 and Six, that's just in five, sorry, up to 2013, over a period of eight years or so, uh, how many hits have we had of these different uh, phrases of people who uh, broadly fall under the category of data analysts? So let's take statisticians, which might be the one that, that people are most familiar with. You'll see back in 2005, the most commonly referred to term amongst all of these people is the statistician. But that's the blue line. But you'll see how that blue line is in decline. And at the same time, there's a bit happening in the computer scientists and the data scientists, but the key growth area is in what we refer to as the data analyst, who used to be less popular than the statistician, but who are now much, much more popular. Now, this is partly just jargon, because to be honest, a data analyst is just another type of statistician, 
Um, but there's an element of what they do which is a little bit different, which concentrates a bit more on the big data. And you have to be a little bit stronger in IT in playing with data and organising data in order to make progress in, as a data analyst. So in the diagram that you saw earlier, we referred to these four different types of uh, business intelligence, of ways of using and informing data. A couple uh, are looking back, the descriptive and diagnostic, and a couple are looking forward. So if you go on with the rest of the videos in this series, what we will be doing is talking our way through each of those four components, talking about a very small sample of, in, of uh, information or uh, approaches that we can take to getting data, to processing data, and to building models with data in, in different ways. So feel free to, to follow along as far as you'd like and uh, hope you enjoy it in the process. So what we're going to do now is uh, take you to just a quick look at one example of a little bit of literature about big data. This comes from the Guardian website. This is uh, accessed in two, early 2014 and you get some idea about some of the news items that have been appearing in this newspaper about data. Uh, big data, four predictions for 2014. How tracking customers in store will soon be the norm. So people will be watching, monitoring what you do in order to identify patterns. Uh, information, how Shazam uses big data to predict music's next big artists. So there's a whole lot of different ways in which big data analytics, rapid development of big data analytics has led to increased investment. There's another example there. So you can see here it's a very hot topic and uh, many people are thinking about the the way in which this large supply of data that's available to us because it's electronic can be used in, in uh, helpful ways. Okay, I think that's probably enough from me, so I hope you uh, enjoyed uh, listening to that video. We're going to stop there and please feel free to follow on any of the others in the future.